On this episode of Plant Curious, Roots and Rendezvous, we are visiting the gorgeous Isle de Mont on Lake Champlain in Vermont. It is absolutely beautiful here, and we're here for a very special reason. That is to explore Zaffa Winery, one of the only female queer-owned, black-owned wineries in the entire United States. I'm going to be joined by Krista Scruggs, who is the founder of Zaffa Winery, who's going to teach us the ins and outs of all there is to know about the wine industry today and how she sets herself apart from the rest. Stay tuned for more because this is going to be epic. So Krista, tell me, how did you get into the wine business? Like, what what does this all mean to you? What does Zafa mean to you? I would absolutely, I think after now 10 years, I would say curiosity mm-hmm. is what was the path. I started on the corporate end of the industry just out of pure an opportunity and curiosity, all while doing that, I was consuming and drinking wines, learning about wines. Uh, you know, I, you know. Now we all know it's natural wine bar, but I didn't know it was natural wine. And then <laughs> that was able to connect where I'm from, which is from the Central Valley of California, a farming community, with fermentation, and then my curiosity of all all came together. Then sent me on a journey that took me from. California to the state of Washington to Italy to France to Texas and then here in Vermont. So that's amazing. Yeah, curiosity, I would say, is what led me here. I actually really love that answer because I feel like, I mean, first of all, this series is called Play It Curious, right? Like, I feel like it's I my curiosity that. So. that <laughs> yeah, I feel like it was my curiosity that led me to um, kind of have this love to of never stopping, like never, never being done with learning. Like, there's always more to whatever you're interested in, finding different avenues to pique those curiosities. And uh, yeah, I just think that was beautifully said. Thank you. So, you know, the first time we we spoke on the phone, you talked about how you are not just a vintage, you are a farmer. And that's what you like more relate to. Like Zafa, you know, we are on farmland. Like it is more than just the wine here. There's, There's a story to it. What are you growing? What does this land mean to you? Yeah, you know, I... I think I've been blessed to be considered someone that's considered a good winemaker and that I've made wines that people do enjoy. But even what led me here in Vermont and acquiring this land was just that land. Um, yeah. And what, you know, roots back even what, what Zafa is, which is a counter spell against colonialism. And for me, the first way to be a Zafa towards the curse of the Fuku of the colonialism, of land, having land access. Yeah. So first and foremost, it was number one for me to do the work of our ancestors, just to farm. And then within that, be able to hone in on the talent, which is like, of course, growing great, but also growing fruits and vegetables also just for sustenance as well. And working within the environment, having a whole system of thinking. So in addition to grapevines, we also grow an array of vegetables of African diaspora from collard greens, okra, and also from fermentable fruits, we grow watermelon as mm-hmm. well. So everything, the philosophy of how we've been cultivating this land is rooted back to doing things that are in, 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 in honor and representation of, of, of our ancestors. You know, that's really beautiful because, uh, you know, I, I do think it's important to kind of find your roots and reground yourself in that. And I, I kind of had a little bit of that journey after my first time of going to Jamaica, but, mm. um, because that's where, you know, my family's from, but I think, you know, that's what led me back to foraging, you know, at the end of the day, I wanted to understand the land and, you know, to be able to eat from the land and find, and, you know, just kind of thrive on what it's providing. Um, and I, and so it's been really special to kind of have that ancestral connection and, and feel that in what I do. And depending on where you're from, like people will try to kind of erase your blackness in Absolutely. a way, right? Absolutely. You know, like it's clear we both grew up in suburban communities, Absolutely. but that Absolutely. does not take away from the fact that we are black and that our, and our experience is so unique as a result of that. Uh, and which is why it's not a coincidence that we found each other, met each other. And also, did you realize when you were talking about certain things that the light was shining yeah, I on did. you? I think that was, that the, was ancestors, crazy. the ancestors. <laughs> clapping say, their clapping. hands. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that was actually pretty beautiful. But no, I think our connection, like, with us 
as our paths crossing the way that it has is think is just an honor of that and that is not a coincidence that we're meeting each other this way even having this interview so yeah very cool absolutely one of the things that got my curiosity peaked when it came to learning more about Zaffa in general and the wines that you had to offer is learning that you guys are 100% women owned uh, and you know you try to keep um, a, a very diverse employee staffing here with over 85% of, you know, the people that you're representing being those who are traditionally underrepresented. Absolutely. How does that impact your daily workflow? And also how does that, uh, kind of speak to who you are as a person? And I mean, we're in the, in the process of becoming B Corp certified. That has been always a dream, dream of mine. And while going through this process and, which would then create an opportunity for also those who are part of Zafa having ownership and equities in the company. And, you know, he's brought on Farah Lopez, who's a Haitian woman. And when I think about what I, what I, when I founded Zafa and created Zafa and if everything that I speak and I state in the root, the vision of it is to be working against colonialism and in regards to honor our ancestors mm -hmm. to me it wouldn't make any sense of the people who are part of it doesn't represent that because it yeah. would be, i would actually be a part of everything i'm fighting against if i wasn't creating opportunities of people whether to be a bpoc or within the lgbtqi community mm -hmm. who are historically it will continue to be marginalized on having these these opportunities to do so I have been blessed with opportunity to have access, right. to have access to resources, to uh -huh. create opportunity to be on this land. Yep. Everything that I do should be thus be able to push that forward because otherwise, if I was not, if I was blocking off opportunities and not creating opportunities, I would just be doing everything that I'm, that I'm so-called fighting against. That is so true. So to me, it just makes sense. I mean, like, and also... Why wouldn't you exactly. have it set up this way? <laughs> right, and, this, and this offer is not mine, it's ours. And that's something that is always in my vision. And so this land and everything we're putting in the ground will live longer than me and then thus a representative of all of us. So that's then taking, moving the needle from that, you know, representing 1% of black farmers or the 0.044% uh -huh. as a black woman farmer, that if I then create opportunities and that's fully moves it forward. If I'm part of that 1%, isn't that my job to try to turn it to be 10, 15, 20% or at least create a path for it to do so? Well, you know, it, it, it's interesting that you bring that up because from a from a generational wealth perspective even you know that th there's there's a lot of struggles even all the way back from the the times of slavery where you know black america is still struggling we haven't moved the needle that much no. and you know something that i notice is like it's like you know one thing we cannot do as a community is hoard the wealth or like not try to build a path for those who are coming after us exactly. because there's more to come and you know we have to always keep this this mindset of like building those blocks to create a better future, a brighter future for those that are coming after us. And I, and I think you're doing just that with Absolutely. this. No one could provide this opportunity for me to be able to be in this space. You actually are doing it too. You know that, yeah. right? Like you choosing to come out to do this with me is literally exactly everything that we're talking about. So exactly. I don't want to get emotional either. So I'm playing I know, it cool. Yeah, yeah. I know. No, but it's crazy because as you know, I just wrote my first cookbook, uh, Forage and Feast, which is an ode to the land and uh really honoring the land that we're on and those who came before us exactly. and the native peoples and knowing where where the food you're you're getting is coming from and uh i'm the first person in my family to be published and i'm like wow that yeah. that lives on forever that that is a slice of history that will always be there absolutely and, uh, I don't think I really had the time to really take Has that it hit in. you? Like you no, have not yeah, until this book, moment. And book and I'm like, is, will be, yes, 100 years from now, 200 years from now, someone will be able to read your book and learn yeah. from you. That is actually it's fucking crazy. insane. I don't think it hit me what you're about to do. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Were you already <laughs> done? Were you crazy. still? It, you know, it, wow. it wasn't easy, but it was so worth it. It was so worth it. Well, thank you. I'm saying this as, as, a, as a black woman in this community. Thank you for that work that you've done. <laughs> With all that being said, like, how do you balance tradition with innovation in this space? And like, what are you doing to really like set yourself apart? Like what, what makes you, you, what makes Zafa Zafa? Like, I guess that's a good question because there is nothing 
that I'm doing that has not been done before. There is nothing, whether it be from fermenting with other fruits, making country wines, you know, like making fruit wines that are just not just grapes. Yeah. Whole fermentation, for example. Um, you know, that's not <laughs> something that I, I, I definitely, that is, that is everything that I am doing is actually an ode to tradition. The only thing that I think that sets it up, me apart is me. I'm yeah. Chris Scruggs. Right. And so everything of my, like, from before, the, you know, before a fermentation is done. So everything that impacted my life from the day I was born and to that moment mm-hmm. has an influence. And that, that energy that you know, what I'm exuding from that day is going to influence the way, whether it be how the wine is processed and then that's all the, how the wine tastes and then like, and all those decisions. So I think what's so beautiful in art is that, is that I am doing something that is replicated a thousand times over that I can work with the same grapes as someone down the street. We could do the process the same way, but it's gonna always gonna turn out different because my energy is coming at it differently. So what just sets me apart is the most beautiful thing about me is just me. Exactly. So that's that's the only thing that makes it oh. like me. I, I, you know, I can't because I can't take. There's nothing that I'm doing that's original. I, mm-hmm. I just like, and I've been, I'm so grateful, and I do my best be gracious in the fact that I've been. I've received a lot of accolades. I've received a lot of attention for things that. It's not necessarily original, but I think what is being highlighted is my take on it, my approach to it, the way that I, you know, that it's truly is honor remain. It took me a minute to realize that, that, I, that what's being, what's being recognized is not that I'm doing something that's original, but it's, 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 it's a, it's a Chris Scruggs twist. Like, I feel Absolutely. like, I feel like when you taste a wine that is Zaffa, that you tasting something that is Zaffa. And mm-hmm. that is, I think, has been the... It's, it's been a journey for me to realize that for me to even be comfortable with myself like Chris, you don't have to change anything about yourself that it's more and more and more you just that you love on yourself the better your wines are going to get so the more and more i become more confident as a woman as an individual as a human i think my wines are going to get even more innovative because i'm getting more because i'm just actually investing in myself in that way and that's so beautiful <laughs> because like you know just from the perspective of the fact that I, I, and I kind of align with you on this. It's like every idea is a recycled idea. You're not wrong about that, but you being you, there's something to your combinations. I'm sorry. That hasn't been done. (laughs) I tried your wine. I tried your wine and I was, I was blown away. I've had a lot of different natural organic wines and you know, I always end up going back to my, Brunello, my Chianti, right. my whatever, you know, the, 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 the things that are the already done before and always going to be loved, not the innovative, you know, out of pocket, let's say, um, wines that are, that are different and you are the brand, like people are the brand and what you bring to the table is unique and different and something to be admired because, um, I, I've never, I haven't had anything like, like I'm your fidgeting right before. now. Like, I, I just like, cause I, thank you. I yeah. like, I'm actually, I'm fidgeting and cause I'm like, I, I, I'm like, I'm getting all shy and nervous about it, but that's a thank you. Yeah. I, I, I have nothing to add to that besides thank you. Obviously we had a chance to explore this land, which is absolutely gorgeous. We're on 52 acres. You said 56, 56 yeah. acres of land. I'm just don't, like, don't rob me with that. Four. We already got to struggle for 40. I'm going to make Listen. it say like, <laughs> and, I got my 40 plus succeed. <laughs> and so much of it that is totally wild, untouched. Anyways, what types of grapes are you growing here? And you know, what, you know, what do those varieties mean? And like, why did you choose those varieties? So we are growing, uh, French American hybrids and I'm growing, it's like, like right in front of us right now is a newly planted vineyard. Uh, I think there's a 116 here, but in total, um, at the end of this grow, at the end of the season, we'll have a little over two, over 2000. Mm-hmm. But so what grows in this region specifically are French American hybrids. Um, but specifically the varietals that I've decided, I've decided to, to grow here are focused on sparkling wines. Cause I, Zaffa, so we have the co Cellars brand and we have Zaffa and Zaffa is a hundred percent sparkling. So now all the varietals are like, so like right, right in front of, in front of us, we have Frontenac, we have the Crescent Frontenac Gris, Frontenac Blanc. Frontenac Noir, 
Clarion, Clarion, which is actually, we have one of the first plants in the country. This, actually, wow. this bridal was just released for purchase for uh, this last season. So, but I was give like, but all first American hybrids, but they're all, specifically the varietals that I chose are varietals that have, um, that are really good just for sparkling wine. Yeah. That's in a basic way because we are a sparkling house, which I don't think most people realize, but we, I'm obsessed with sparkling wine. So I guess riffing off of that, what are, you know, some of the ways that you utilize the land you have already to add to the wines you have, you know, you forage a little bit. So like, what, what are you using from this land in your wines or what have you experimented with? I'd be curious. So I experiment with pine needles. <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, yeah, I did pine, I did pine and spruce mm -hmm. experimentations. I did a sumac experimentation. Yep. We also tap. So speaking of sparkling wine, like for sugar, for the secondary fermentation, you need sugar. Yeah. And typically what people just use this cane sugar, but I actually, my sugar source is from my maple trees that I, that. I tap. I started tapping yeah. this last year. I historically have always used maple syrup, but I would source from, um, from others inside the state. But now moving forward, we now have our own. I'm actually growing, um, uh, sorghum. So I'm going to be, this is my our first year. I did about an eighth of an acre of sorghum that is out there and the purpose of it you know some people growing sugar they thought i was just growing it just like as actually this is great for the soil too for but i was like no i'm actually going to make molasses out of it and use it and that's an ode to our ancestors that yes i have the maple syrup which is an ode to we're on seeded abenaki land so yep in regards to maple syrup an honor to indigenous people but then to also honor my ancestral heritage using sorghum utilizing that we also grow watermelon as well um, so yeah, <laughs> very cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So Krista, tell me the good news, right? Or tell us the good news. Share, let, let's talk about this. You just got certified organic. Yes. What does that mean? What was that process like? Like it that, was, like, no, on. like, we, honestly, like, like honestly, like Show this, us this arrived in the mail <laughs> yesterday. So I'm proud. Gonna, like the timing was impeccable. I was told that this was going to happen. Um, it's still like hitting me in some ways, but felt one, it's about this, this goes over like, you know, like from your book into like, we have access to land. Like this is documented. This is not like something that could mm -hmm. be lost in history. No one could take this. Literally, this is, is something that is in writing that is, you know, I'm not worried about, I know what, I know how I farm. I know what I do. And so the certification process is like a way of saying like a stamp of like, that is on paper and writing. It's yes, it is a statistic, but a statistic also as a black farmer mm -hmm. that this, that this is done. You know, clearly there's only 116 certified black farms in the country. And wow. so now I guess I'm number 117. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, <laughs> so funny. Well, let's cheers to that. On that That's note. Freaking Lutely. Yeah. Sounds and uh, on, on that note, what are we drinking? We're drinking number nine, which is a, a co-fermentation co of Saval oh. and cider. Um, this it's my good. favorite. Of all the series, you know, that's my favorite. Of the, I mean, if I, you know, you're not supposed to choose favorites of your children, but... <laughs> One of your Sneak babies. Leader, yeah, but. it's very clean and approachable. Like Thank I, you. you know, I I think one of the things that I've discovered while trying different natural wines and things like that is a lot of the uh, a lot of them tend to kind of taste muddy and uh, you know no disrespect but a little muddy and like grassy in a way that's unapproachable and not really the most palatable. Like I'm gonna drink it if I spend. The the twenty thirty dollars on a bottle. Yeah, I'm gonna drink it. Absolutely, absolutely. But within you know, experimenting and trying these new wines and, and these organic wines, I, I, it's been hard for me to find something that, you know, tastes as clean as this and really sets itself apart because it's unique. It's dry. It's got a lot of those characteristics you would look for in like a traditional wine when you're just going to the store to pick something out. But yeah, there's nothing but traditional about it. Exactly. Yeah. It's got a very unique flavor profile that's... Uh. When you when you nail it, you nail it. And I do things that I've, I'm at a stage in my career that I I am really... When I get you a nailed couple, it. When I get a couple like that, it actually makes me really proud of that me as I, like, I've matured in my, in, my, in, my, in my skill set. So thank you so much. Amazing. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to point out is like... Let's get a close-up on this bottle here. You look at the ingredient list. 
What we got? Grapes and apples? Well, <laughs> that's it. Come on. That's it. Clean. Yes. So technically, yeah. all of your wines are vegan. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which, yes. Uh, yes. as we know, a lot of wine is not vegan, which a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. It's the fact that you're not going out of your way to use animal parts or byproducts, and it's not even like we 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 live two two different worlds. Like right. that's not the point with this, but it's about the fact that it's clean, it's minimal. You can read the and ingredients. And wine is food. That's in the day. Wine is wine food. Wine is food, and yeah. taste it. Do you like it? Then yeah. So the, so then you go to the website, go to the text sheet. Oh yeah, this has this and this has that. The first. Do you fuck with it or not? And I think that's all that matters. When you meet someone, our taste is number one indicator. You could go out to eat. I don't like that. And then it's done. It's the best leg. It's very, mm -hmm. very polarizing. And so if you like something, then that should encourage you to, to learn more about it. But you shouldn't you shouldn't be led into drinking wine at a typicity or what you think something should be. It should be your own curiosity. Go back to curiosity. Your curiosity should lead you in the way of what you like as opposed to being told what you like. Full circle. Also my philosophy on life. Yeah, I, yeah. I like that. So I'm not a lot. trying to tell someone you're going to like it. It's like, hey, there's grapes in You like grapes? You like apples? You like them together? Maybe. I don't know. So try it out. And then from there, <laughs> you know, if you don't like it, teach their own. That's cool, too. Absolutely. Cheers. Yeah. So when you really think about all these experiences and in, in the past that led you here, what is the most rewarding, you know, piece about owning a vineyard? Like, what is it? What does it do for you? So I, I start each morning with a moment of, of gratitude. I do that through meditation and prayer. And I do like my room that literally overlooks this newly planted vineyard that's right in front of us. I What I'm grateful for is this opportunity to learn. I actually have the opportunity to, to literally live throughout my curiosity. My curiosity brought me here and my whole life is literally that in a cycle. The season was not the easiest season, and so things that I thought I knew how to be shifted and pivoting, that's I had forced to learn something, and so I'm mm -hmm. actively forced to be more immersed, first forced to surrender to things I can't control. Mm -hmm. That's just teaching me things in all other aspects of life, and not to be all foo foo, but I'm going to be foo foo. But yes, it teaches. Well, the, <laughs> the greatest thing about other than you know the gift of cultiva cultivation is the gift to be able to surrender and when you're surrendering you're you're on a path that is being a better person you're on a path to always always learning and what a gift that i literally look at butterflies went by like i i, I think every day i have an opportunity to be in awe i like i don't I know what else i don't know all. what i don't know what else to say and like and there's you know of course it's like i get to wake up and create i get to wake up and farm like you know that 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 shit is cool it is rude in capitalism in some way, but it like just outside of that is yeah, just I get to wake up and literally my job is to be curious and then to say like what if I do this? See let's see what happens. <laughs> That's fucking wild if you it think is. about it. <laughs> no, and it was funny, you know, you say, you know, you have to surrender and I because I had to kind of experience that with writing this book too, right? Like, um, you know, as you were mentioning earlier, like you experienced like the dry seasons and everything like that over the over the last two years. Like this year we've been over blessed with some rain sure right but right. i'll take it you know what i mean like and and with the timeline i had given to me and the fact that there were no mushrooms popping up and nothing and i and i was on these deadlines and i had to i had to tell them like look i can't force nature to do what i want it to do exactly so how can i pivot i had to change so much of what i envisioned the book being to fit into what nature provided exactly and work with that and i think that's such a testimony to, to living in harmony with the land and Absolutely. and what we do on a daily basis so i really love that like how do you engage within the local community here to promote wine tourism you know like we are out on this little island in the middle of nowhere virtually is how i think of this region like it it's really tucked away so like what is it that you guys that, that you guys do you specifically to um promote wine tourism in this area and like what are your plans for the future my contribution of the communities is like one is focused on community that i would not be here without my community mm -hmm. and that it would and like we, me and jamie see about conversations of people saying like why would you why would you why would you promote another winery there aren't they your competition like no we're we want if i'm successful they're successful they're successful i'm successful and we're people there's people who don't even know about hybrid wines there's people who don't even know about this island which is sitting on the oldest coral reef and the, and the, like in the, the world and that uh, there's not a, there's not a coincidence that there's vines here and yeah. so we're all telling a story together that will outlive us and so 
the agritourism within the land that we're on itself, that, that this island, and then also what Steve and Jamie have already did before me that I'm just hoping just to do as, just as well as them. I hope they answer the questions. It just that over an that answered it in the <laughs> in the best way possible. It is weird to think there's about competition and it. like there's no competition. We're all in this together. I always say yeah. co you know community over competition or collaboration over competition Absolutely. any day. Absolutely. Uh, if we can help build each other up and and support the infrastructures that be and, and you know help to foster a community of growth by helping one another, that's the best way forward. It always is. And it's also anti-ethical to my whole philosophy. If I'm creating a, an ecosystem, a whole system thinking ecosystem mm -hmm. and nature, but I'm not doing it in my day-to-day -day life, there's something... I don't there's, think, I, don't think I understand. Yeah. Be I don't think I'm understanding what that means. If mm -hmm. I'm trying to create it or steward it in nature, but I'm not stewarding it in my own life. So I think it's anti-ethical to not see things that way while farming mm -hmm. this way. This is all connected. Well, on that note, I mean, let's wrap this up. And, you know, my final question for you would be, like, what are your future plans for Zafa? What's your vision? How do you see yourself transforming this space to be a reflection of everything you want it to be? I'm just so curious. Oh, what a question. You know, two years from now, three years from now, each year, and we're checking off a list yeah. of something that I've said that I'm going to do that I am doing, mm -hmm. and it's coming into play. And that 10 years from now, we watch this video, everything I said, that we're doing, we're gonna do is actually happening. So my vision is just to execute the vision that I've already put into in play right now that we discussed and actually execute it. You know, we will be a B Corp. We Amen. will have a whole, you know, we will have a Savo pasture out there. We will be making, we, you and I will do a collaboration. Uh -huh. You know, and and, and I will, we will continue to be 85% represented by the by BOPOC LGBTQI community. We will continue to be 100% woman owned. That's like, I just me just literally sticking through to what I'm saying. It's just too, it's too much to lose not to, meaning like for the greater of us, by us. Because like, mm -hmm. as we talked about before, like this isn't my land, this is our land. What I'm doing is not for me, it's for all of us. Or is off as more than just, we're more than just one. This is, this is bigger than that. And that's the most important thing I want to make clear. And I hope to cement the vision is that Zafa is more than one. It's, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you, that was that was beautifully said. This is probably the favorite interview I've ever had. Uh, just very free flowing, and I, I think your authenticity shines through everything you do, and I I hope you realize that. That thank you. you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Until Cheers. next time. Yes. <laughs>